Today we're going to talk about a topic which comes up quite a lot about buying land in the Philippines. I can down in Manga, come to my friends. Quite a subdued start to the day. It's a special day today. I've made Jane something like she likes for breakfast. So we've just come out for the day. We've just come out for a bit of a drive in the car to test it to make sure it's all okay. And we've come back to Brongai Patag, where we came a few months after we moved to the Philippines when we were looking for land for Isabella, for a future investment, for a future house. We're on our way to the land. There's several lots for sale. And depends on how much you want to be cut, 400, 500, 600 square metre, for example. You can't drive there because of this, but <laughs> we walk down the side, we would be okay. Come on, Isabella. Imagine waking up to this view in the morning. Lots changed already here. There's a new restaurant behind us, called Zipang, a Japanese restaurant. We've not been there yet, but we'll certainly try it out. And the area here, when we came, the roads were quite bad. Not a lot was done. Wow, definitely changed in such a short space of time. But we're going to talk a little bit today about buying land in the Philippines, things to look out for, things to consider. Really nice, beautiful, beautiful breeze, beautiful sea view. One of the reasons we consider this area for Isabella's house for investment, and we still do consider it to this day. Only a couple of things held us back from making the purchase, along with the land we recently saw, and we're going to discuss those in this vlog for you. Every vlogger, every blogger has an opinion when it comes to buying land here in the Philippines. Some positive, many negative. The only thing you need to know for sure is that a foreigner cannot own land in the Philippines. There may be ways through businesses, but to be honest, it's very difficult, trust me. It's not an easy thing to do at all. You have to set up a company which has to be approved and then you have to have only a 40% ownership in that company, 60% owned by Filipinos. So basically you will never actually own the land in your name, not legally anyway. Each company will be scrutinized. And there's a lot of things to go through just to get the company approved, let alone buying the land. Land can only be owned by a Filipino national or a former Filipino citizen. There are limitations depending on if you have Filipino citizenship or if you're a former Filipino or dual citizen. Absolutely there are restrictions. These can change year by year, so we're not gonna give any figures here. Just a little bit of a disclaimer, any information we give you in this video, it may not be up to date. It may change month by month, day by day, year by year. You never know, these things do change. So before you make any decisions to buy land, always fact check. And what we mean by that is do your research thoroughly ask a solicitor have a look online obviously first for a basic understanding but never just believe what you hear either from the agent or from someone online on social media always fact check as things can change it's not to say people are going to purposely mislead you it might not be their intention the information they give is in good faith but information can change even overnight very quickly so always fact check everything at this point, we want to give a shout out to our video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is one of the world's largest VPN providers. A VPN is a virtual private network which keeps you private and secure online by hiding your IP address and routing your internet traffic through an encrypted connection to a privately owned VPN server. In this case, owned by NordVPN. Now NordVPN has plenty of servers all around the world you can find a server near you for a better speed or connect to a server in a faraway location for more content that may be locked away to a specific region. NordVPN is compatible on all devices. For extra security, NordVPN members can use a double VPN service. Traffic is routed through two VPN servers, doubling the encryption. Furthermore, when it comes to booking tickets for flights or hotels, 
your price can be impacted by your location. With NordVPN, you can unlock the very lowest prices. This is so very useful when traveling and saving money on hotels and flights, enables you to see more and do more. And while you're traveling, you have peace of mind of privacy and security too. It's not uncommon for hackers to impersonate public Wi-Fi and to steal your data. Now I never use public Wi-Fis without using NordVPN. Sacrifice the price of a cup of Starbucks a month and protect your browsing with NordVPN, as well as unlocking the very best flight and hotel prices. Get four months free on top of a two month plan here at HTTPS NordVPN.com Adam and Jane. When you come to buy land in the Philippines, there's different categories of land. Obviously the one you want if you're gonna build a house is residential. There's a lot of different categories for agricultural land. They begin with letter A. So the land we saw in Brongai Cabinton was category A16, agricultural land for corn growth only. Can you convert land from agricultural to residential? You can. It's a very long process, a very difficult process, but you have to own it for a certain length of time. You also have to prove upon reclassification that it's more beneficial to the area for it to be residential and that the agricultural side isn't valued anymore. In other words, the crops aren't growing and there's much more benefit for it to be a residential area. Agricultural areas are restricted, they're protected obviously as the intended purpose is to grow. You might see a lot of former rice fields for sale. They usually have dried up and they're not productive anymore, in which case they can be built on. Whether it's morally right, I don't know. Whether it's better to keep them as rice fields, I'm not going to give my comment or my opinion on that. Everyone has their own opinions, but you have to be careful when you buy land. If you're looking to build a house, it must be residential for you to build. And you can't just build until you have consents, all the consents, the building consents, the planning consents. It's not easy, it's not quick. You have to do things right before you even lay a foundation down. Another thing to check if you're gonna buy land is the ownership of the land. Is it owned by somebody who's still alive? Is it one owner, is it multiple owners? Are all owners present to sign the documents? If they're not, it's definitely gonna slow things down. If the owner's deceased and they've left the land to their heirs, their sons, their daughters, their wives, their uncles, whatever the relation may be, be careful. It may be that the family members aren't in agreement that the land should even be sold in the first place or the amount or how much, the price. It can vary the price and it's a difficult thing if the owner isn't around to talk to as well. If it's family, you have to be sure you're talking to the right person who has the complete control of the land. There might be say three, four brothers who own the land between them. Maybe you're speaking to one or two of them only, maybe not all of them. Everyone's opinion is needed as everybody needs to sign, agree. It can make it difficult here, but it's good to buy land. We've bought two lots of land. We've built a house on one. We have our helping hands garden on the other, and we don't regret it at all. We're looking for more land. Sometimes land may seem cheap in areas. You have to understand why that is. If you see a lot of land, then it seems like a good bargain. Do your research, do real, real good research. You might have some problems down the line. When we looked at the land in Patag, one of our concerns was there's no development here at all. So we weren't sure if it was going to be developed, but somebody built a restaurant here, put some investment into the area, gives you confidence that this will develop. So it might be worth us looking at the land again. The only trouble is land goes up in value year on year, even month on month, depending on developments, how much has been bought. We're gonna go home now, a bit of gardening to do this afternoon. Nice to get out, nice to see where we were before in Patag. Definitely there's been some change, some infrastructure built, the roads, electricity, even a restaurant now. As mentioned earlier, a foreigner cannot purchase land in the Philippines. However, there are a few things that can sometimes happen. A foreigner can inherit land from their Filipino spouse. So there are two laws that apply here and they cover the inheritance rights of a surviving spouse. They have the 1987 Constitution of the Philippines and the 1949 Civil Code inherited from Spain. 
So in simple terms, for this example, say you have a Filipino wife and you have a foreign husband, they can absolutely purchase land together. However, only the Filipino will be the owner of the land, the legal owner of the land. The house can be in both names, both can own, but the land only in the wife's name, in the Filipino's name. Should the Filipino die, then if there's no will made, the land will be passed, or can be passed, I should say, to the foreign spouse through inheritance. One thing to note, a foreigner cannot inherit property through a last will and testament, as the Philippine Supreme Court has viewed this as unconstitutional. You can hear the building work behind and the house right around the corner. There's a lot of construction going on around this area. A lot of people building their houses. A lot of people investing in land, getting on with their lives. Can you lease land? Yes, you can. As a foreigner, you absolutely can lease land, but not from your Filipino spouse. No, that's not allowed. You have use of that land as drawn up in the lease, but in terms of owning a house that way, yes, you can own a house, but again, not the land that it's on. How about condominium units? Well, these are definitely can be owned by foreigners. However, as long as no more than 40% of the unit, of the building, I should say, is owned by foreigners. So if you have a condominium unit with 100 units, as long as no more than 40 of those are owned by foreign nationals, that's fine. And absolutely, you can sell those as well. Again, when you come to buy land in the Philippines, probably the most important thing Apart from all the technicalities about the owners and things like that really, it's the location of the property. A lot of things you need to consider, a lot of things. Where we are, we're about 330 meters above sea level, so it's nice here, really nice, nice and breezy. You don't want to live too low land. There is actually flood zone maps you can find on the internet. I'll share a link in the video description to the one that we found where we live, but there's certainly lots of flood maps you can find. And they tell you about historical flooding and areas that have actually been listed for flooding. There are guides as to which lands are susceptible to flooding. You don't need to pay a solicitor or an attorney for this. You can find this out yourself. So lands that have never flooded still can carry a flood risk. Absolutely, it can happen. Low level lands such as X rice fields, they are susceptible to flooding. They really are prone to flooding. That's the reason they were rice fields in the first place, as there's a lot of water needed to grow rice. Certainly with climate change, whether you believe in it or you don't believe in it, it's undeniable at the moment that there's been so much rain and so many floods. Certainly in the Philippines, the last few weeks, there's been some really, really severe floods. But location is key, absolute location, not just the level of the land. Where we are, we have a really nice breeze. We have a great view, a mountain view and the sea view. But sometimes the mountains can be dangerous too. In case of severe rain, typhoon or earthquake, then inevitability you get landslides. A lot of heavy rain can really give you a landslide. We're in a great location, we have great road access. Hospital, police station just down the road. There's schools locally, there's malls, shopping. But at the same time where we are, we're out in the country, we get a lot of good nature here. Really great views, really nice breeze. The best of both worlds, I suppose you'd say. It's only about a 15 minute drive down to the city. So infrastructure, schooling, hospitals, police stations, things like that really. If you're gonna move here and have children, then you do need to consider about schooling. There are good schools in the area. And certainly afterwards for jobs. If you live in a very remote area, the internet can be an issue too in the phone service. We found that where we were actually in Cabinton, there was absolutely no phone service on our networks. There might've been on other networks location which is um, close to hospital and to police station or fire station that will be a good location so should you buy land in the philippines as a foreigner well you can buy it of course you can you could buy it with your your filipino partner or spouse but you never own it of course you may never own it but that doesn't matter you can still enjoy it just live every day Life isn't about ownership. You come into this world with nothing. You leave with nothing. Exactly. Just absolutely enjoy life. Don't, don't get caught up in all the little technicalities. If you're in a loving relationship, a good marriage, and you're happy, there's no harm. It happens in every country. It can happen everywhere in the world. You buy a property with somebody. The law isn't always going to protect you. There's certainly circumstances can change. I've heard of things in the UK where a husband and wife have gotten a divorce and the courts, they give it all to the wife, all to the, all to the husband. That has happened before. 
it will happen again. So don't be complacent that the law will protect you because things can change, circumstances can change, and laws can change as well. 20 years time, the law can change. You're bound by that new law. You're not bound by the law when you bought the property, you're bound by the law whatever it is at that time. So things can change. So don't get caught up on technicalities. Do your research, do your due diligence, and just enjoy life. That's what we do here. We have two lots, the house and the cacao lot, the help and hands garden. We love absolutely every aspect of both of the lots and we just get on with our life and enjoy. If you're new to our channel, our name's Adam and Jane. We've been living in the Philippines for three years now. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And hit the bell icon to be notified next time we upload one of our videos. If you like this type of video with information, drop us a comment. Let us know what you want to know about living in the Philippines.